Noswaitha. Good evening. Croeso e Amser Story Eventer. Welcome to the Venture Story Time. And I'm sure for those of you who've joined us for the last few times uh, will know exactly what's coming. But for those of you who don't, uh, we've been reading The Worst Witch. And we're now, would you believe it, up to chapter seven. So tomorrow we'll have been doing this for a week. And already it feels like second nature. So um, if you'd like to join in, uh, be sure to say hello. I'm uh, going to make sure that I've got this up on the laptop next to me so that I can see everybody's comments. Um, and please do join in. Please let us know um, that you're watching or if you'd like a shout out. Uh, it's a really nice way uh, for us to keep in touch with you and everybody else at home uh, who's part of our venture community. So, before we jump straight into it, let's have a quick recap of where we're up to. So, we've been following the story of Mildred Hubble, who is the worst witch at Miss Cackle's Academy, an academy for witches uh, set in a castle high up on a hill covered by mist. There it is there. We've met uh, Mildred Hubble's friend Maud, who, unlike Mildred, who is tall and thin, is short and tubby and wears glasses and has hair in bunches. Um, then we've met Miss Hardbroom, who's their form tutor, who's very scary and very strict and wears her hair in a tight bun. Then there's Miss Cackle herself, the headmistress, who's a very kind lady, although she does try to be strict when she needs to be. And then we also met Ethel Hallow, who is the bully of the school and she does not get on well with Mildred at all and Mildred even tried she tried to turn her into a frog but she ended up turning her into a pig which Ethel has never forgiven Mildred for and then another time uh, Mildred and Maud were at a uh, potions test and instead of making a laughter potion uh, which there they are there, they made a disappearing potion instead. So there they are, disappearing, or just reappearing at that point. Um, now last time, last night, we were at a broomstick formation. Uh, Mildred's class had been picked for the Halloween celebrations to put on a broomstick formation. So we're going to start just at the end of chapter six. So if you're sitting comfortably, I've got a chocolate poi this evening. Mm. A nice hot chocolate just to keep myself warmed up. I've also got a trusty hot water bottle as well. So make sure that you're sitting comfortably and we'll begin at the end of chapter six. So last of all came the circle, which was quite the easiest part. All over soon, whispered Maud, arranging her broomstick in front of Mildred. As soon as they'd formed the circle, Mildred knew that something was the matter with her broomstick. Now, Ethel had borrowed Mildred this broomstick. It started to rock about and seemed to be trying to throw her off balance. Maud, she cried to her friend, there's something... But before Mildred could say any more, the broomstick gave a violent kick like a bucking bronco and she fell off, grabbing Maud as she fell. There was chaos in the air. All the girls were screaming and clutching at each other, and soon there was a tangled mess of broomsticks and witches on the ground. And there's a picture of all the witches struggling and falling from the sky. There was chaos in the air. All the girls were screaming. The only girl who flew serenely back to Earth was... You guessed it, Ethel. A few of the younger witches laughed, but most of them looked grim. We're so sorry, Your Honour, apologised Miss Cackle. As Miss Hardbroom untangled the met heap of girls and jerked them to their feet, I'm sure there must be some simple explanation. Miss Cackle, said the chief magician sternly, your pupils are the witches of the future. I shudder to think what that future will be like. He paused and there was complete silence. Miss Hardbroom glared at Mildred. However, continued the chief magician, we shall forget this incident for the rest of the evening. Let us now begin the chanting. 
And that's where we left chapter six last night. So on to chapter seven. And it looks like the witches are on their way back to Miss Cackle's Academy. At dawn, the celebrations ended and the pupils flew wearily back to the school, some riding double as their own broomsticks were broken. No one was speaking to Mildred. Even Maud was being very cool towards her friend. And Form 1 was in disgrace. When they arrived at the academy, everyone went straight to bed. It was the custom after the all-night Halloween celebrations to sleep until noon the next day. Mildred, said Miss Cackle in a sharp voice as Form 1 made their way miserably up the stairs. Miss Harbrew and I will see you in my office first thing tomorrow afternoon. Yes, Miss Cackle, replied Mildred, almost in tears, and she ran up the steps. As Mildred opened her bedroom door, Ethel, who was behind her, leaned across and, across and whispered, That'll teach you to go around changing people into pigs. And she pulled her face and ran down the corridor. Well, we knew it, didn't we? Ethel did have something to do with it. Mildred closed the door and fell onto her bed, almost flattening the kitten, which leapt out of the way just in time. Oh, Tabby, she said, burying her face in the kitten's warm fur. I've had such a dreadful time, and it wasn't even my fault. I might have known that Ethel wouldn't lend me her broomstick out of kindness. Nobody will ever believe me that, that it wasn't me, just being clumsy as usual. The kitten licked her ears sympathetically, and the bats returned through the narrow window and settled upside down on the picture rail. Two hours later, Mildred was lying in bed, still wide awake. She was imagining what the interview with Miss Cackle and her terrible form mistress would be like. The kitten was curled up peacefully on her chest. It'll be awful, she thought, sadly, looking towards the grey sky outside the window. I wonder if they'll expel me. Or perhaps I could tell them that it was Ethel. No, I'd never do that. Suppose they decide to turn me into a frog. No, I'm sure they wouldn't do anything like that. Miss Hardbroom said that it was against the witch's code. Oh, what will they do to me? Even Maud thinks it's my fault. And I've never seen H.B. more furious. H.B. is their nickname for Miss Hardbroom. She lay thinking about it until she was really frightened. And suddenly she leapt out of bed. Come on, Tabby, she said, pulling a bag out of the wardrobe. We're running away. She stuffed a few clothes and books into the bag and put on her best robe so that no one would recognise the usual school uniform. Then she picked up her broomstick, put the kitten into the bag, and crept out along the silent corridor to the spiral staircase. I shall miss the bats, she thought. It was a cold, dull morning, and Mildred pulled her cape around her shoulders as she crossed the yard, glancing round in case anyone was watching. The school seemed very strange, with no one about. Mildred had to fly over the gates, which were still locked, as usual, but it was difficult to balance with the bag slung on the back, so she got off the broomstick on the other side of the gates and started through the pine trees on foot. I don't know where we're going, Tabby, she said, as they pricked their way down the mountainside. And there is the silhouette of Mildred with her satchel and tabby cat perched onto the broomstick. So Mildred's ran away. Well, we knew Ethel was up to no good, and really it's Ethel's fault that that display all went wrong. But let's find out where Mildred runs away to. Now, I've had a peek at the next chapter, which we'll read tomorrow, and I guarantee it's a very good one. So please make sure you tune in tomorrow for more of The Worst Witch. We are coming towards the end. So let's see who's been watching with us this evening. Carly Braisdell, hello, Carly. Nick Hopley Hart, Asha Fisher, hello to you both. Oh, Nick's commented here. 
Bimbo and Topsy for Very Young or Mr Pink Whistle. I think these might be suggestions. Uh, yes, I have a, a, a limited number of uh, children's books um, and I don't think the libraries are open at the moment. But if uh, if any if there's any way of getting them to me, disinfect them, uh, then we'll have a look at uh, other alternatives in the future. Nicholas James. Hello, Nick. Uh, Amanda Michelle Williams is watching. Hello, Amanda. Nice of you to join us. Um, We've not had a video from Karen today, so I think you should all comment on uh, the earlier videos that Karen's done. If you've not seen them, then please go and check them out. They're fantastic. That's Karen from our Early Years Centre. Um, and she's been singing nursery rhymes for us, and I think that they're brilliant. So please uh, comment on the previous videos. Let's put a bit of pressure on Karen and the other ladies to produce some more videos. We're hoping to have uh, some items from our play team and Val team as well, and of course, Malcolm and Julie too. But we're all thinking of you, um, and it's lovely to just have this uh, opportunity every day um, to get in touch and let you all know that we're thinking of you and uh, to let you know that we're all well, we're all um, enjoying ourselves so far and doing what we can. Mandy Roberts is watching as well. Hello, Mandy Roberts. Karen Mills. Karen, if you just missed what we were talking about, you'll have to watch this video back at the end, but we want more videos. So please, please record some more videos and uh, send them in and we'll make sure that they reach our Facebook page. And um, Playworker Rhiannon has had uh, some interesting ideas too. Um, so keep an eye out. All I'll say is uh, Ascol Dinas Bran uh, have inspired us. So if anybody's uh, from Ascol Dinas Bran, you might know what I'm talking about. Kim Williams is watching as well. Hello, Kim. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to try and do an earlier slot. We're thinking of going live at five. Um, now, we don't know whether this will match with story time or not or whether story time will be a separate thing uh, we're just trying things out at the moment so if you see us popping up earlier than usual uh, that's why and if you've got any ideas about what we might be able to do during this time then please get in touch and let us know uh, we've also got some playful hints and tips that we're going to be going out onto our facebook page and social media very soon um, they're from resources like play whales and uh, oh, what's the other? Oh, Ludicology, of course, Ben and Mike, for those of you who know them. Uh, and they're coming from the Wrexham Youth and Play Partnership, so keep an eye out for those. But for now, it's been lovely to see you. Diolch and Willio, thank you for watching. Hopefully, uh, I will see you tomorrow, which promises to be a really exciting chapter in The Worst, which you will not see it coming. Um, so, yeah. Great with you there, sweet dreams, nostra, good night, and uh, hopefully I will see you all tomorrow. Diolch, tataruan.